Doctor, you joked about um, if if people don't get sick, doctors will run out of business. Yeah. Sometimes uh, that's yeah. how, from a patient's uh, point yeah, of view, yeah, is also yeah, there. Yeah. Like, do I really need to do a C-section? Yeah. Is it is it business yeah. per se or? Okay, so the reason for cesarean section, the we have a raising trend for cesarean section, and the reason for it is multiple. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, one of the things is um, uh, medical indications are different. Before, they would uh, they would have uh, difficult deliveries where baby would be damaged, mother would die, you know. So, some amount of the cesarean section increase has been for the safety of the mother and the baby, mm-hmm. and we have better monitoring so we can detect things beforehand before things have gone wrong. So, a timely cesarean is for the good of the baby and the mother. Mm. and uh, you know me i am very much into i was very much into now i don't practice obstetrics but into delivering normal deliveries and giving them that good trial even if you have had a previous cesarean mm. and i would say this to all my patients that we will try our best to uh, give you a normal delivery but delivery the process is uh, del- the normal or the cesarean is just a process the outcome is a safe mother and a baby mm. now let's not get carried away with the process if i give you a normal delivery and if the baby or the mother is not fine what's the point what are we working towards so once you have had the baby uh, irrespective of whether you had a cesarean or a normal delivery if the baby is fine and the mother is fine you will be as happy right the process is forgotten later okay mm. yes we don't want to do an unnecessary surgery so we will give it a good go and make sure that we deliver so that is my this thing so if beyond all that if i have to do a cesarean then fine fair enough we were doing it for the safety okay mm. now this all my patients do understand and uh, when i've done a cesarean and uh, i say with pride uh, nobody else would have delivered that baby normally if i have done a cesarean that is the amount of time and everything that i give to make that decision mm. and uh, and patients realize that and they always say fine thank you for giving me that time it's okay it doesn't matter you do a cesarean but i now know that it was justified mm. I think majority of the things come from the patients is that they somehow are not involved in the decision making to that extent, and they feel like maybe the doctor could have waited, maybe the doctor did it for other reasons. Mm, okay, mm. I wouldn't put a finger on my own fraternity and say that um, people are doing more cesarean for various reasons. Yes, there might be a few who might be doing it, like you said, for business. Doing a cesarean will get more money. um and le- less time spent because cesarean is easy you just go to cesarean then the normal delivery you're waiting you're monitoring you know it takes more effort um yes there might be some i have no idea who's doing it uh there are more than that actually there is a small percentage um are being done because the doctors are worried that if things go wrong mm-hmm. so they might be taking a safer side right you know it's like i might do a cesarean one hour later because i'm comfortable and experienced and confident somebody who's less experienced than me might do a cesarean an hour before mm. because they are worried that things might go wrong and when somebody like for example if i had a patient and i go on leave and um, i have transferred it to any of my colleagues or any other doctors or if the patients ring me and say or sometimes i've had patients who have gone back to india for delivery or gone back to philippines and they're messaging me from there the doctors advising cesarean and section what should we do mm. i always say go by what the doctor says mm. because the doctor is doing what he or she is comfortable in that situation if i am not going to be there i cannot challenge that decision right because i do not have all the facts mm. and at the end of the day as i said cesarean or normal is a process it's the healthy mother and the baby and if we cannot compromise that at any cost so yes there are more cesarean sections yes as personally i do believe it can be you know reduced but for that as i as i said i am 55 years old and i've had um, an enormous amount of experience I've worked in india I've worked in uk um, and uh, if you asked me same situation 25 years back at what stage i would have done a cesarean to now what stage i would do a cesarean in my own treatment and my decision making there's going to be a difference of course so how can i judge another person mm. who's doing that right but i feel more than that it is the communication which matters if we explain to the patients that this is what is the risk like for example sometimes we have this preterm um, not cesareans preterm deliveries mm. there's a major problem in the mother blood pressure or something like that 
and or the baby is not growing and we might we might have to deliver the baby earlier because it's safer to deliver the baby mm. but we are risking prematurity mm. obviously if it's very very early we don't want to risk the prematurity but if it's gone to a certain extent where we feel baby might be safer otherwise like severe diabetes and uncontrolled diabetes and there's a possibility baby might just die like that you know suddenly out of the blue right. so in those cases yes we are risking prematurity um and i explained this to the patient we have two choices one is risk the prematurity or risk the death prematurity is treatable mm. majority of the cases premature babies go home mm. death is not treatable right. so if i s- f- seriously feel that the death is somewhere around the corner possible very serious possibility not scaring the patient but serious possibility i tell them i am not ready to take that risk if you are ready fine i might wait and nothing might happen in two days on one week or two weeks whatever but i need to explain to you what is the risk you are taking mm. so it's like when they do the amputation for an ulcer they you know, like this, some of these ulcers where they're spreading upwards they say uh, amputating the leg cutting off that part of the leg is the only treatment otherwise you might end up losing life so in those cases yes you're losing a leg but what is your alternative right. by waiting right. so i think it's the process uh, once it's explained clearly to the patient that um they we call it informed choice mm. for you to make an informed choice you need to know what is the two sides of the story based on the two sides and if you say there are some patients who have said i'm happy to wait let me wait mm. and uh, we waited still you say that you agree with my decision i cannot do things mm. i can only try to convince required, you yes. mm. i i more than uh, see i can th- i can make you get scared very easily you know i have the uh, doctors we have that uh, little bit of edge over the patients it's very easy to scare and get you to do a cesarean that's not what i want to do i want you to understand what is the risk and do it so for that the consent i can get your consent if i tell you a few things and scare you you will give me your consent and you'll kind of be done with it mm. but retrospectively later on you will feel like was i given all the information mm. 